My name is Evelyn Wood and this is my show Thrift to Vintage and in this episode I want to show you how I refashioned this 1920s inspired outfit just from scarves. Yes, this is entirely made of scarves found at the thrift store that would have otherwise ended up in landfill so we can be a lot, a lot more fashion conscious with our 2020 party dress this season. So what do I have planned? Well, let's talk about the inspiration. This dress is actually being constructed for a re-fashion runway parade that I'm doing for Worn Out. There is a whole series of videos about that. I will link them all below. This is my 1920s evening wear ensemble. So I was really inspired by the 1920s beaded tabard style dresses. So that's a tabard style is that style that comes over the top. It's basically a rectangle with a hole in the top and the sides are kind of strung together with pearls, beads, something fancy. So Miss Phryne Fisher happens to wear a few of these in uh, Miss Fisher Murder Mysteries. If you do not know what that is, you must watch it. It is fantastic. And I think it, it just really epitomizes classic, beautiful beaded 1920s evening wear because that's what I think of when, what comes to mind when I think 20s and party dress, you want beaded evening wear, right? That's what we're going for. So that's what I was really inspired by. And as soon as I sort of saw this, I thought, you know what? I could make one of these really easily out of some beaded scarves, which are basically just rectangles, little hole for the head, make this up, string it together. Obviously there's a few more details involved than just that, but essentially I could do that really easily out of a scarf. You see where I'm going with this, right? So this is the scarf that I will be using. I have this beautiful beaded trim on this end and it's just chiffon. So this is my fold up here and I'm actually going to extend my triangle, my, tri my, tri my triangle, my rectangle uh, from the top. I'm going to use this a second scarf, join this to here this should be enough as it is and then I'm going to join the other half here of that over on this side up here and then through the sides here I'll just need to finish these edges of this insert panel to match the nice edges of the scarf down there yeah okay I'm going to start mine I'm doing teeny teeny tiny little stitches here on this one. So I have successfully now just made a larger rectangle piece. That's it. And well, what do we do now? Here's what I'm doing. So I marked in my shoulder line here so I could see it because that will be right along the top of my shoulders, half of the garment. Now, if you look at any of your clothes, you'll know that the front and the back necklines do not open the same. So you'll always want more of the open neckline at the front and less at the back, usually. For me, I probably don't want my neckline to come down past this here. I think it would sit nicely, you know, maybe about here. I think something a little higher. We'll have a little look.
I definitely may regret this, but I'm going to cut out some bias strips out of the uh, leftover chiffon that I cut up from the center piece of the scarf that I used for the neckline piece. Cut some bias strips and try and uh, make it bias facing out of the chiffon. I know, it could be a terrible idea. We'll see how it goes. But I'm going to catch on and get on with mine because I need to get this finished. Okay, that turned out really well. I'm super surprised, but it means more hand stitching. I'm going to hand stitch that bias facing down underneath. So again, it's a nice, neat, uh, invisible finish. It's looking so good. So good. So, you know, I really like the fact that this curves and sinks down as it should, being nice and light. It's looking so good. This, uh, the weight of this at the bottom is really giving it that sort of heavy drop, which I think really feels nice and it adds to the to the feel of it. So all I really need to do to this uh, tabard dress now is remove my basting stitches, of course, and then add some ties at the side. Okay, no, I've changed my mind. I'm not going to do the ties. It's just too much ribbon. It doesn't look right. Plan B. Let me think. Okay, new finishing plan. Use the velvet ribbon that comes across and do a little join, probably so it's open about, say, yet that big, and it will close on one side with a hook and eye because it needs to come off to get on and, on and off. Then, Given that this actually needs to go on a model that is a different size than me, uh, so it needs to be adjustable at this point. I'm going to put these little, uh, uh, lovely little floral flowers that I have, I think actually match as well. So I'm going to sit those sort of just below the waist hip line, and I'm just going to actually pin these in place on the night because I don't know where they're supposed to go on my model and I don't want to stitch them on to this so that is going to be temporary. I could even change my mind and put uh, brooches there. It'll let me have more options in the future of how I want to fasten this um, anyway. So once they're on this is finished and then of course <sighs> there's the slip. The slip. So I found this dress but I don't want all black. I want a color that I can see underneath so it really shows off the garment. So I am going to do the same thing with this scarf yet again. Uh, I'm just going to basically like create a rectangle. So sew up the sides, cut this open. This has got to fit a model that I know is bustier than me. So it needs to be a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do at this top edge is uh, fold it uh, over but leave myself enough that I'm going to create a casing up the top and I'm going to feed some ribbon, some beautiful vintage ribbon through so it can kind of gather in and create the size needed. And I'll just put maybe, I think a bow at the, the front. Considering I found some uh, not so great like flaws and pulls in the fabric, uh, I'm kind of glad that this one is definitely going to only be my temporary slip just for the parade. So I will make something nicer, probably out of vintage fabric that I have uh, for more permanent use after. But this one, uh, it needs to be out of recycled materials for the refashion runway. So that's part of it as well. So this is my parade, uh, parade slip. So I just put some buttonholes at the top here so that the ribbon in my casing can actually come out and uh, tie a little knot. Okay, I think this is turning out really well. So uh, I'm actually going to leave the hem of the slip just as it was. It's kind of got a little rolled hem. It's kind of a bit fuzzy, not so nice, but it does fall nice. It's quite uneven. And I kind of like that because you look at a lot of 1920s dresses and they do have a lot of unevenness about the hem. So I quite like that. I'm going to leave it there. Just finish up this little hand finishing through here. 
think the color looks really nice too. If you have been loving this so far and you're maybe new to sewing and don't really know the ins and outs and how to do things, why not join me at VintageSewingSchool.com and I can show you a thing or two perhaps uh, about some sewing and refashioning in particular. So if you're interested, go visit VintageSewingSchool.com and I might see you in class. Otherwise, I think that I just have these tiny little finishings to do and then this one is ready and finished. So I will probably have an entire runway show in between when I film the after. I think will be after the runway parade. Let me do the reveal and I may even be able to insert some uh, of the footage from the show. I'm not sure. Leave me your comments below on how you enjoyed it. Remember to like this video and very, very much importantly, remember to share it. If you know someone who's going to a 2020s party and they can make something entirely of scarves. How easy, right? Thank you again and until next time, bye. I have done something a little bit different for this refashion video. I've actually made a separate how-to video for this refashion. It will be coming out in just a few days and it will be linked below. It is a longer, more detailed how-to version so you can make your very own 1920s tabard dress yourself.